Hello and welcome back to Sakura Beach. Where, incidentally, I'm still very disappointed by the lack of aliens so far. A few minutes passes as I... W a few minutes... Uh, that should be a few minutes pass, or a few minutes passed, as I watched Momoko awkwardly flip the fish fillets over. It was a wise decision to get her away from those spices. So, uh, what exactly do I do for you two? Huh? What do you mean, Seiji? Well, you talked about how I'm always helping you two out, but... Well, you never really recalled any specifics. We're trying to cook here, idiot. Wait until we're done. Okay, sorry. I suppose it was a question out of the blue. Ayumi's probably doing her best to ensure Boboko doesn't make off with any chili powder. I don't know where she got the idea that I like spicy food. After a long wait, the fish fillet is finally presented before me. Incidentally, I'm not going to make the comment about spicy food. I, I'm put it this way: Has anybody here seen Curb Your Enthusiasm? If you haven't, it it's one of those shows that's very hit and miss with its comedy, but occasionally it is bloody hilarious. Anyone who's seen it probably knows what I'm referencing when I say spicy food. Okay, I'll leave this one to the comment section. <laughs> Eat up, Seiji. It was made with a lot of love. A lot of love, she says. Carefully, carefully dismembering it, I raise a piece to my mouth very slowly, and both of them stare at me in anticipation. Oh God, I'm terrified that Momoko somehow interfered with the fillet when Ayumi wasn't looking. It's quite tasty, actually. Ayumi managed to keep Momoko from doing anything ridiculous with those spices. It's delicious. I knew you'd like it, especially with my special blend of spices. Special blend of spices. Momoko, what did you do to the fish? Made it even more delicious. Momoko! I told you just to cook the fish. No spices and nothing else. It's fine, Ayumi. Look, he's enjoying it. As unbearable spiciness assaults my tongue, I can feel myself profusely sweating. Seiji? It's good, right? No. No, it really isn't good, Momoko. Ah! After kick on the spices. Always fun. Our homegrown chilies are like that. Seriously, we have uh, a few chili plants in this house, and you, you taste it, and you're like, that's not too bad. Actually, that has a bit of a kick. Oh, good lord. Yeah! Ah, ah. And then you're running for the nearest glass of water, slash milk, slash whatever the hell you can get down your throat quickly. <laughs> you probably just poisoned me for all I know. What did you put on the fish? Chili powder, of course. Spicy food was going to be the best way to make it happy. She looks really pleased with herself. What up? Hmm? What was that, Seiji? Why are you sweating like that? Water! I dive for the sink, twisting the tap all the way. And I don't know how long I sat there afterwards. My sense of time and reason disappeared for a moment. Oh, so you didn't like it? Of course he didn't. You probably completely caked it in chili powder. Momoko looks as if she's about to cry. I just wanted to make him happy, but I've ruined dinner for him instead. Oh, I'd really better say something. I don't like seeing Momoko when she's so upset. It's okay, Seiji. Throw it out if you don't like it. I promise I won't try to cook for you again. Oh, God. Okay, so do we be nice or... Oh, let's be nice. But I'd like you to cook for me again. Yeah? Why? Well, you had the best intentions with the dish. I'd like to say thank you for doing that for me, Momoko. Oh, so forgiving, Seiji. It'd be heartless of me to scold you for wanting to do something nice. Not really, it was really stupid. I... I don't think I can eat the rest of this, though. Oh well, there's always next time to succeed. We'll order pizza instead. Yeah, that sounds great. Omi looks over at the rest of the cooked salmon fillets with disappointment. Chili on salmon? Seriously? No, 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 no. Best way to cook salmon. And don't pan cook it either. Piece of salmon. R uh, kitchen foil. L put the salmon on the foil. Add a little bit of butter. 
little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt, a little bit of oregano. Fold it up so that you've effectively got a sort of parcel thing with the um, tin foil around the salmon. Then stick it in the oven about 180 to 200 degrees. Well, that's centigrade, not Fahrenheit. And um, then give it about 15 to 20 minutes. When it comes out, it should be just about right. This has been Recipes with Richard. <coughs> I guess it can't be helped. Unless my mother wants to sample her own cooking. Um, I think I'll pass this time, Ayumi. I'm sure it's delicious. Maybe you should just enjoy it yourself. After all, a good chef doesn't taste their own food, right? No, all good chefs taste their own food to make sure it's okay. <laughs> Let's face it, you've never seen the classic. Yeah. Yep, one in the customer, one in the chef routine. No, it's it's a classic uh, alcohol skit. Yeah, you know, where you're adding, uh, yeah, you know, where you're making a sauce out of wine. Go you know, and it's good slug in the uh, saucepan and or the meat dish or whatever you're uh, making your sauce in, and then a good swig in the chef. Actually, a very important part of cooking is sampling your own food as you go along. So you you want to become a better chef, don't you? Don't you want to try it out for yourself? I uh, have to leave the room for pizza, are you me? <laughs> uh, there's no really point. There's not really any point in being mad about any of this. She did put a lot of love into it, as she said. Oh well, I guess pizza is good too. Last night was great, despite what happened earlier. We barely got any sleep. We just sat there talking. It's just like we used to do when we were children. We'd hide out in the woods, staying out far later than we were supposed to. And one of our favourite things to do back then was to tell ghost stories. The ones I usually get told usually ended up with a Yumi and Momoko clutching to me out of fear. I think I've gotten a lot closer to the, with them since this trip. I can't exactly explain any reasons why, but... Well, with the way they've been acting, I've been able to be a bit more... open with them, I guess? Back at school, I tend to keep to myself most of the time. We all ended up in different classes, so we can't spend as much time together anymore. And we're not neighbours anymore, either. My grandfather helped me move into another house that he owned. He insisted it would be good for me to learn to live by myself. I visit his house once a week, though, which gives me time to visit Ayumi and Momoko, too. Still, it's not really the same as living next door to them both. So I hadn't really seen either of them for a while before we decided to go on this beach trip. This has been a nice reminder that friends are important too. Maybe that's why they've been acting the way that they have. They want to spend time with me because of how little we've been seeing each other. I don't exactly have a lot of friends either, and I can't afford to throw away what few that I do have. This is obviously something I haven't noticed before, but I find that time moves very slowly when I'm not daydreaming. It's really, really, really boring. I guess they're both sleeping in too. Maybe staying up late with them wasn't the best idea. Nah, I shouldn't say that. They wanted to spend more time with me after dinner, and I still haven't worked out anything that these two have been planning. How is it that I haven't been able to do that? I'm not an idiot as much as Ayumi likes to call me one. They also seem to be bringing up the past a lot lately. And there's always one moment or another in our childhood that they've been bringing up. <sighs> Maybe they're trying to remind me what we've known all uh, each other for a long time. What I was thinking before was correct. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Since they haven't been seeing me lately, I, I guess they're doing their best to make sure I don't lose contact with them. I think I've at least partially figured out their strange behaviour. All of that talk, wanting to spend time with me, wanting me to be here instead of daydreaming. I guess that must mean something to them if they're trying so hard. Hey, you two, are you going to get up now? The door quickly creaks open, and they drag themselves into the living room. Good morning, Seiji. Momoko isn't herself, it seems, and neither is Yumi. Both of them are frighteningly tired. Good morning. Uh, I wouldn't call it a good morning. <sighs> How late did you two stay up for after I went to bed? Not that late. Well, that's reassuring. They don't look like they're up for going to the beach, though. Do you two want to skip the beach today? You look like you need more sleep. I 
absolutely not. We need no rest. And any signs of a sleep deprivation disappeared immediately. And it happened to Ayumi too. Uh, okay, are you sure? Yes, we are, idiot. Nothing's going to stop us from going to the beach. Such determination, it's... Well, it's almost a little frightening to behold. So, what should we do today, Seiji? I can think of so many fun things we can do. I don't feel like having any swimming lessons today. I am more than ready to take on the ocean myself. Oh, so you don't want to spend time with Seiji then? Th that's right. It's not like I want to spend time alone with him or anything. It seems Momoko can never get enough of the water. She's a champion swimmer at school too. Some of the students joke that she's actually a mermaid that grew legs instead of fins. Ayumi isn't going anywhere near the water though. There's something wrong, Ayumi. Nothing at all. I just don't feel like swimming today. It'd be more fun to just relax for today. She lets out a loud yawn. I guess I can understand why she doesn't like swimming. As I sit on the beach with Ayumi, I slowly drift off into my own thoughts. And looking back at her, I notice my eyes are moving off of my own accord. I can't help but look at certain things. What's on your mind, you fool? I immediately snap out of it and look away. N n nothing You've got that look on your face again. But, but it's not like I'm worried about you or anything. I think you just look stupid when you do that. Just thinking about the upcoming exams. Why think about that? We're here to forget our worries, aren't we? Yeah, but... Well, don't you think it's a bad idea to not worry about them? I want to do really well this year. Maybe reach the top of the class? I'm telling this to Ayumi, one of the smartest students in our school. And she just shakes her head at me. No, no, you fool. You don't think I can do it? It's... It's not that. I think... I think you're doing it for the wrong reasons. What do you mean? Are you doing this because you want to get into a good university or something? Or is it just to show off? That's actually a good question. But, well, it's one I'd rather not think about right now. I don't know. I just I feel like making a change. Sometimes you have to make an effort to become better, don't you? Might as well strive to be the best. You don't need to be the best to be happy. In fact, I think too many people overlook their own happiness to chase lofty things. She happily flicks her legs up and down. Look at Momoko, for example. She has terrible grades, but she never lets it get her down. Seiji, I just wanted to tell you... Look, you need to start looking at things on Earth, not in space. Maybe something you'll miss if you don't look. Something I might miss if I don't look? Yeah, is it my imagination or have both these girls gone on holiday with this guy in an attempt to cop off with him? Or at the very least, end up in a relationship with him? Because frankly, that's the only implication I can take from this. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And you need to look harder. Ayumi stands up, stretching herself and letting out a loud yawn. Bloody hell. Here we go again. Why is it that whenever I say the Y word, I immediately do it? Ugh. It would be really easy to fall asleep here, listening to the waves. Hey, Seiji! You looked like you were spaced out for a minute. Remember, no daydreaming allowed. I wasn't daydreaming about space, don't worry. Just thinking about things. I guess you can be excused this time, but don't think I'll let you get away with it next time. 